Hello fellow Woods Wanderers, um, out for a, a walk today and I had a couple of questions about a knife that some of you guys may have seen me seen me carrying a couple of friends, a couple of followers reached out and said you know why the sudden upgrade in a very expensive very high-end uh, piece of knife when most people see me carry more of the common man stuff, the the Moras, the the Beckers, the PKS stuff, the the more accessible blades that people use there. Well, it's kind of a bit of a meander, but we can we can kind of sit on that. The knife in question, for those wondering, is this. Now, those involved in the bushcraft scene for the past four or five years may recognize that mark. It's the mark of Sandy Jack. This is a Jack Lore, but it's a very uh, special Jack Lore, to me at least, anyway. But the reason why you haven't seen me carry this before was because I bought this many, many years ago off somebody who I consider uh, an inspiration, somebody who I aspired to be like back in the in the early days when I started this journey uh, very seriously outdoors. So I said to myself, I said, self, um, maybe maybe one day you can be like that guy and, and like other guys, because those who have been on the scene for, for a while will know that back in the day and still some schools do it now that if you serve your time serve your apprenticeship at some schools that when you uh, know the skills know the knowledge at least of that school's curriculum and you know can share it on and pass it on in a way that that school sees fit and with their ethos you would get an instructor's knife um going back that many years ago it's something that i thought i'd never have i mean uh, those of my uh followers and, and friends would know that I'm a kind of from the wrong side of the tracks in the wrong part of the world um, so getting a chance to earn um, an instructor's knife was something that I didn't think that I would I would get the chance to do so I said I'll get my own knife I'll buy a knife that I can aspire to eh, cheesy possibly but that was what was my drive so lo and behold this guy came on uh, Lee Jones, shout out Lee, I hope you're doing well brother um, and just a, a badass bush ninja of every calibre, of every description and he had put this up for sale now being a knife collector and a knife seller like I was and now very humble designer at times I knew what a Jack Lore was at the time Sandy was at the height of his game in super popularity you, you'd have to sell your firstborn travel to Egypt stand under the full moon in hopes of even getting one of his blades Lee was selling his this one so I bought it with not much cash that I had lying around but I bought it to show myself that one day I would have the skills and maybe the knowledge and the respect to be able to use a tool like this so you know you don't when you take a driver's license buy a Rolls Royce because you're going to tear the clutch out of it you're going to curb the wheels and that's what I've been doing over the past kind of five years also a little bit of history about the knife you see it's full tang but those avid knife collectors among you may notice that's a kind of a slightly different shape to the Jack Lores that you see nowadays or over the past recent years because this one was made when Sandy hadn't really got his hands on a wood lore per se the Ray Mears version so he was just doing it by eye making knives for friends making knives that he could have so that's why the shape is more conducive to a profile that I prefer a little longer a little bit of a drop point taper tang and just an Excalibur of the forest an absolutely beautiful one so I, I worked I worked hard and um, and with the help of all of you guys and, and girls I've, I've traveled around I've done my bits and, and bobs and also this knife disappeared for a while. I have instructor's knives now, which I'm, I'm very proud of, and they stay under lock and key. But sometimes bad things happen. Dishwashers break. Taxes need to be paid. Kids need new uniforms. And that knife has been sold and bought back <laughs> an embarrassing number of times. Sold it to a guy in the UK and he sold it back to me. Sold it to a guy in Ireland and he sold it back to me. Sold it to a guy in Sweden and he sold it back to me. And I finally sold it to Brandon O'Dell, a good brother from the States. Life took a turn. I started working hard, started traveling more, started doing all the stuff that you guys and girls like to see me do. And I finally, 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 finally had the chance to buy it back. 
The last time I actually sold it was to fix a leaky roof in my house and to also buy a plane ticket to a very special event that helped me shake the hand of a person who put me sitting here on this stump today in front of all of you guys. So that knife is beyond special to me. And finally, when it landed back in my door after eight weeks of the corona taking it into mystery land where I thought it was lost forever, it is finally back on my hip. And it's so beautiful to be able to take it out into the woods and truly appreciate it for the tool that it is and know that I have the skill and discipline not to chip it, accidents do happen, I may do, but also to repair it, to maintain it, to look after it, to carry it on my hip, to, uh, you know, make sure that the sheet stays good and, and fix the leather and, and strop it every evening and repair the spine on it when I use it for classes. So that knife, that Jack Lore, is my dress sword. It's uh, a knife that I've had for many, many years, but worked to carry and it is now on my hip. I don't think that I'm anything special per se. It's a personal achievement that I personally feel that I can take that knife out into the woods now, give it the respect that it needs, um, use it to the fullest of its capabilities to craft and share projects with you guys and, and just enjoy being outside. So that's why you've seen me take this massive leap from the more common man, more everyday person, kind of tools to the super high-end <laughs> super rare blade that that is um because i think i can do it justice now so there you go for the handful of people that reached out and the very eagle eyed among you that spotted it on my hip in certain videos and stuff and floating around that is why i am carrying that jack lore it's not a recent acquisition it's a very old acquisition something that's traveled around helped pay bills for people helped pay bills for me and I know it's back in my hip where I hope it will stay for, for quite some time. So there you go. Little Joe story time. I'm not actually doing much out here. I'm just on a walk um, exploring this part of the forest. This forest is as dead and as damp as... <laughs> that's what I really won't say what's as dead and as damp as. And I've never succeeded in getting a bow drill here. So maybe, maybe before the summer is out I will. Because even though the summer, it is summer, you can see everything up here is just absolutely destroyed. And if I could do that with my Jack Lord, I'd be a very happy man. This forest has kicked my ass every time I've come into it. But this year I'm going to get it. I know I'm going to get it. So stay positive, stay hitting the trails, go to the forest that kick your ass and try and get yourself something that you too can aspire to. Big love and namaste as always, Forest Family. Peace.